I teach a labor history class in, in Bronx Community, and in the book that we use, which is problematic, I mean, textbooks in general are pretty problematic, but when the guy was describing Samuel Gompers, who was the head of the AFL, he made sure to say, or she, I'm not sure who the author was, made sure to say that he, he was a Jew from blah, blah, blah. Where, as opposed to other people who were indigenous Americans or Native Americans, I don't mean you know Indians, but I mean white people. Um, it doesn't describe what their mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. background. No, they're just was a from. human being, right? They were just this guy, Terence Powderly, who was the head of the Knights of Labor or something like that. And it's all designed. I'm not sure that that this person consciously realized it, but it's but it's so much a part of racism in the United States that people are identified in those ways so that you keep the identification of the those people being the problem. You know, so the Jew is the problem or the black is the problem and or the Muslim is the problem and you have to continue to identify them so that it's always in everybody's consciousness that they are the problem and he, the media has got a wide breadth. They can talk to lots of people. So they're the problem as opposed to you know, just this particular individual or some the problem deriving from somewhere else. So it's, it's, it's institutionalized in the media, it's institutionalized in education, it's institutionalized in every single way. Especially, you know, I, uh, and this is my own, I don't know whether anybody else thinks this, but the United States had a particular problem in the sense that you have these colonists coming from another country to a place that's already you know, there Got are people. people. There are millions of people that living here. So, as opposed to having uh, racism, is not quite as bad in Europe as it is in the United States. Although there are people who may disagree with me about that, but but in the United States, you have to deal with not only the annihilation of a people, but you have now an integration of Africans. You have all these immigrants coming in. You have this Mexican War that the United States, you know, in, in gets involved in because it wants to get all that land for the southern plantation owners. There's so many different groups of people. How are we going to deal with this? So, you know, in order to be able, you can't just say, like in England, I'm English and people emigrated there. Here, it's so many different races of people that you have to get s some sort of identification, which is, I think, why we have the Pledge of Allegiance so much more than most other places. But the whole race issue in the United States has been so, you know, difficult because of the so many different groups of people and in incorporating Mexicans, Hispanics, blacks, all different groups of people that basically the whole identification of race and, and ethnicity becomes like a major thing for the American psyche as opposed to somebody who's English, who knows their English, or French, who knows their French, because those countries had long been established, yes, yes. as opposed to the way America got going, you know, so. So if you take your, in these last 27 seconds, oh. <laughs> if, you, if you, wonderful, Carol, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, if you, if you uh, take those lenses out your eyes, you know, and you see that, oh, this is me, you know, this is me, this is me, this is me, this is me, this is my uncle, you know, this is, you know, uh, then, uh, then history and the world looks quite different, right? So listen, this is the facts, um, Carol Lang, uh, Reasons for Racism, bye.